That's okay. Uh, welcome everybody to the Learning Lab uh, 24. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, sentiment analysis using Amazon <coughs> reviews of uh, baby products and convert this to a numerical data and doing sentiment analysis, say if the review is positive or negative review. So it's going to be a binary classification using logistic regression. And as a bonus, you're going to see how to compute or how to program your own logistic regression function. And then you're going to compare with the scikit learn solution. So as introduction about the CRUZ and the CRUZ Data Science Initiative, CRUZ is a consortium at the University of Calgary focus on geophysics and seismology projects. And the CRUISE Data Science Initiative is a wing inside the CRUISE that uh, it's focused on data science projects and uh, work with academic and industry projects from the geoscience, energy, environmental engineering, and uh, a broad, a broad uh, number of areas that we can work with, with different data. Uh, we also do programming training we do courses uh, in Python, R, and MATLAB that could be introductory courses, how to use Python, R, and MATLAB, and can go to more complex courses, uh, how to do in machine learning, applications, data science, and uh, in Python and R, even how to build apps so you can develop uh, an app or a product to deliver to your clients. And we also provided those learning labs that you're watching today. Those are bi-weekly free webinars to, uh, online. And you can access the previous one uh, on YouTube, tweet and get uh, the news. And <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little sick today. It's gonna be a little bit like that. And you can always get in touch with us and get the news by following us on Twitter and LinkedIn. And also if you go to the meetup, we have a cruise meetup web page where you can see the future events. And the hosts of today, uh, I'm Marcelo Guarido. I'm uh, the host and today's presenter. I'm a data scientist with PhD in geophysics and I'm uh, the head of the Cruise Data Science Initiative. So Daniel would like to present yourself. Yeah, I'm Daniel Trad. I am associate professor at the University of Calgary and also um, associate director of CRUS and working in machine learning. Uh, Dave, would like to present yourself. I'm David Emery. I was in industry for 34 years and I'm now back at the University of Calgary doing a PhD with a focus on machine learning and geophysics. I'm also the educational director of education for the CSEG in Canada. Thank you. And Brian? I'm Brian Russell. I'm Vice President of uh, Geosoftware in Calgary and also an adjunct professor at the University of Calgary and the Cruise Consortium. Thank you. So just to clarify, Dave is the only student here. <laughs> okay. Um, so today's agenda, we're going to talk about uh, sentiment analysis, what sentiment analysis is, and how we convert a text uh, that's a sentence to a table with numbers that you can work with. Then we're going to give an introduction to logistic regression, how to compute everything and uh, using a gradient descent solution. And then you're going for a live coding. We're going to be coding live. So you're going to have an empty code and then we're going to be doing live. And then some final notes. So we're starting talking about uh, sentiment analysis. Uh, for today's project, we're gonna work with Amazon Babies products. So the, the reviews that were given to those products, and they're gonna be using the review and the ratings to do our classification. We are gonna train our data on the review and try to predict the rating. By doing that, we are gonna read a review. We have several reviews that were given to us you're going to convert this to a data that you can read. This sentence, this sentence you're going to convert to a data that you can read. And then, um, we are going to classify 
these are going to pass, uh, pass through a classification model that's going to be a logistic regression. And we're going to classify if it's a good review that you're going to call plus one, or if it's a bad review, if it's a minus one. So basically, it's just going to be a binary classification today. I'm just going to turn off my camera. That will be a little bit better for you guys to see. But the first question is, how do we convert these? So what you're going to be doing, we are going to be looking at this text here, this sentence that is given to us. And you're going to be converting to a table by counting the words. So how many times a specific word appeared in this, um, in this review? But you're going to also select just a few important words because there are words like and, a, these, these. They, they don't give any meaning uh, about sentiments. So there are a few important words that you're going to be working with and then you're going to be counting them on every review and you're just going to build a table that says each column is going to be the word and how many times it appeared in the specific review. And about the important words, uh, we are not going to go through anything too specific. Uh, I just selected the important words before. I did a TF-IDF analysis. We are not going to go through that today. The focus more is how to do the logistic regression. And then having all those words separated, we are going to give some kind of a coefficients to them some weight for each one of those words. So in general, we're gonna have positive, we could do by simply doing a linear regression and then classify each side of the line. So we have the good, the great, so we have the counting of those words. And then you just multiply by your coefficients. And those ones are gonna have a positive coefficient, those ones are negative coefficient, and the ones that are not important, uh, coefficient equals zero. In our case, you're just gonna remove. And then something that you can do is just get, if you have uh, two words here for this classification, uh, we draw a line that would be our classification boundary. And everything that goes for to the negative side, that would be the score uh, uh, less than zero following this equation, this line equation. Um, so we're going to classify as a bad review. Everything that goes to the positive, so more to the side to the awesome, so you're going to classify to a positive review. And this can be generalized for several other words if you just follow uh, the line equation or the equation of a line. That is just the multiplication of the weights and your features. And then we could just get the sign of the score. So if the sign is positive, we say the, it's a positive review. If the sign is negative, we can get and say that uh, the score, the review is negative. However, uh, there are several points that are gonna be too close to this line that uh, the classification boundary when this equation is zero, basically. And they're gonna start to have the problem how much positive it is. There are a few that are very close to not be positive if they are too close to this line. So we need to start to question ourselves, how much can we trust the predictions if you just draw this line? So that's the idea that you go for the logistic regression. You're gonna start to work with probabilities. So logistic regression, is one of the methodologies in statistics and machine learning. So it's inside the supervised learning and the classification. It does a class, classification output. So the output is going to be a categorical uh, uh, vector. And probably we are working in an area that's very similar to this customer retention, something like that using these Amazon reviews. And then what we do, we just take our line equation and we get the sigmoid of it. 
also called logistic function or logistic link function. When you get to the probability, so the probability of a review to be positive by given uh, your features and your coefficients, in this case is your reviews, what is the probability? So, and it follows this equation, the sigmoid equation, where the exponential have the minus the score. That's the line equation here. So instead of to have uh, numbers that can go from minus infinity to infinity, we got to have, we're gonna have numbers that go from zero to one. So zero is probability zero, no, is not gonna happen. And one, it's pretty sure that's positive. And that's uh, how this curve can be drawn. So that's the sigmoid curve. When we have uh, larger negative numbers, so it's pretty close to zero, the sigmoid. And when you have larger positive numbers, it's getting always really, really close to one. And we have an area that uh, increases and we have a threshold that you need to define when it's gonna start to be positive or negative. We're gonna say that at sigmoid, uh, larger than 0 0.5 is going to be positive, else is going to be negative. That's what you're going to do. And then what we need to do in the machine learning to draw, uh, to get the best probabilities, we need to do some optimizations. We need to find a kind of a cost function and then do the derivative and make it equals to zero. And the first try we can do uh, is to talk about likelihood because that's the combination of all the probabilities that you have, the probabilities of all your words, basically, or all your reviews, sorry. And the likelihood is just the product of all of your uh, probabilities. So what we wanna do, we wanna maximize this. So when you have the best one, the best probability is when this likelihood is one, meaning that all probabilities are one. And to maximize, we need to take the derivative and make it equal zero. However, this is a bunch of products. And to take the derivative of a product, it can be a little bit frustrating if you try to do in your hand. So what we do, we take the log likelihood. So that's a, a very, smart solution because when you get the logarithm of the of product it becomes a sum and it's way simpler to do the derivative of the sums and uh, when you get also the logarithmic of the probability that's the equation that you're going to have so the log likelihood that's something that we are going to be computing today we have to calculate all these probabilities. So we are going to be computing how to calculate these probabilities. We are going to show how to calculate the log likelihood where we have this operator that name is one. So we are trying here to see the probability for our measure to be positive or for the review to be positive. So if it is one, if the statement is positive, the output is going to be one, else it's going to be zero. Here is just the dot product of uh, our weights and our features. I just generalize a little bit here. Instead of to put only X, I said that could be a function also of your features, uh, but uh, didn't change from before. It's just a gener generalization. And you have this logarithm in here. So when you take the derivative of this that you wanted to maximize uh, uh, over, um, the derivatives of the weights, because we want uh, to maximize uh, the log likelihood by changing the weights of our function. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate here, but it becomes a very simple solution where it's the sum of our features multiplied by the errors, where this is one or zeros and the probability to be one. So if this prediction is perfect one, so this value is gonna be zero, the error is zero. And then if you have just one measurement, so this is gonna be zero. So that's the maximum. And they're gonna be updating those weights by using gradient uh, descent methodology. This derivative is also called a gr gradient. 
So we're just gonna be getting our the current value of our weight and summing uh, step size or step length multiplied by the gradient. So what we need to calculate today, and I'm gonna show you how to do, are the probabilities. We are gonna create a function to calculate probabilities. Uh, we need to calculate the derivative. So we're gonna create a function to calculate the derivatives. We need to calculate the log likelihood to see if we are maximizing the log likelihood at every iteration. So we're gonna show how to calculate this. And then we're gonna show how to calculate the gradient descent. That's gonna be a for loop inside a for loop. And that's what we go for the live coding. So I just like to say, if you have any questions, you can send to the Q and A that um, Daniel, Dave, and Brian are gonna be answering to you. So that's the code that's gonna be provided to you. I'm gonna provide for you guys uh, both code with all the code the answer and with the answer, so you can try by yourself, but I'm gonna show you today how to use. And uh, the data that's provided to us uh, that you're gonna be using today. The first one is gonna be this baby, uh, Amazon baby uh, subset.csv. So that's the data that's gonna be working more and uh, it contains uh, four columns and a bunch of rows. Each row uh, contains one different product and one review or the same product and uh, different reviews. And we have a column that's the rating, that's the stars that the Amazon give. If you have a purchase in Amazon, they have they give from one to five stars. And what we did, we converted this rating to a sentiment, if it's positive or negative, one or minus one. So everything that's three or equal stars, we said the sentiment is positive, else is gonna be negative. Two and one is gonna be negative. And the review, if you see that's a long text, and that's what you're gonna be working with. You're gonna convert this to a table of numbers. Another data that was provided is the, those important words. This is a JSON file. So those are the words that I selected to be the most important. It looks like a, a list. So those are just uh, a few words that uh, from a TF-IDF analysis, it, they showed to be the most important. And let's start the coding now. So I'm gonna show you step by step how to do. First, we have to do the preparation of the data. So we need to read the data and uh, clean the data. We need to take all the things that you have to do. So first thing, let's import some packages that you, we are gonna be using. So as you're gonna work with uh, CSV files, data frames, let's import the pandas. So import pandas cd. Also gonna be doing numerical calculations. So numpy. Um, and uh, as you're gonna also work with JSON files, so we need to use this JSON uh, library. So we're gonna be importing the JSON library. So that's what you're gonna be using so far. So the first thing, uh, let's load the data. So I'm just gonna call this data family products and it's gonna be equal pd dot read underscore CSV. And then just a little trick, if you start to put uh, the name of the folder and press tab, it's gonna show you the files in here just by press tab. So you select. And then um, you just run now. So now we loaded uh, the product. So let's just check a little bit. Let's see the product. So let's just print the data frame. So when you do that, it's gonna print the five first rows and the five last rows. So remembering uh, that to equal our CSV file, the first row of the CSV is gonna be taken as the column name. We have here the indexes. 
in the data frame, that's something from pandas. And remember that in Python, uh, indexes start to be zero. So we have the name of the product and uh, we have um, the review in here. So that's the column that you're gonna be working with. Uh, another thing that we can do, we can see that uh, we have uh, 53,000 rows, more or less, and four columns. So, yeah. Uh, so those are the CSV that is gonna be provided to everybody. So just to remember, the CSV I put here inside this data folder, and it's gonna be in here. Um, so we have a uh, 53,000 uh, reviews. So let's first check what is the type of uh, each one of those columns. So it's nice to do a data analysis before. Uh, the type. So if you run this, so you can see that the two first are objects because they are text or strings and the other two are integers. Uh, we can check also for missing. So let's check product dot is an a dot sum. So, okay, we can see that we have a lot of uh, reviews, like 241 uh, reviews missing. So those are data that you're not gonna actually use because as we're gonna work with the reviews only, that's our only feature, the review that we're gonna be converting. Um, this data is not important. So what we can do, we can drop uh, all the NAs. So we are gonna also drop all the not names here. So that is a combination of both that sometimes a product has no name here in the file, but can have a review and vice versa. It can have a name and not have a review. So let's just drop it in NAs. So you're not gonna have a problem. So we do like that product, but drop NA. You're gonna do the in place equals true, meaning that you're gonna be overwriting this, uh, the original data frame to the one that doesn't have the NAs. So after we do that, uh, we can check again, if there is any missing, just to make sure. So now we have no missing and you can get the shape again. So now we have uh, 52,741 rows. So we dropped a little bit more than 300 rows. That's not even, um, uh, it's not even close to 1%, I guess. So that's okay to work with that. Okay, now let's count uh, how many positive and negative uh, reviews we have just to make sure that we're not working with imbalance of the data. So you can do print. I like to do more or less like a report. So we'll do like that. So it's gonna be the sum of the column sentiment of the product sentiment when it's equal equal one. So this part inside is gonna return a vector of true or false, true if sentiment is equal one, false otherwise, and true in Python is one, it recognized as one and false is recognized as zero. So this is gonna give the sum, the, how many positive re reviews we have. So that's the amount, 26,000. We can do the same for the negative. I'm just gonna copy <coughs> and paste. I'm just gonna change here to negative and here to be equal minus one. So that's it. We have uh, approximately the same number of uh, positive and negative reviews. So we don't have an imbalance of the classification. 
So that starts to be quite easy for us to work with. So now let's start. We did some cleaning the data uh, about the drop NAs. Now you're going to clean in the data by literally uh, cleaning the reviews. So we are going to remove uh, punctuations and also selecting only the most important words to be counted. So first we need to read our JSON file. So we're going to use the open command. Please open, and then you can select the data. And then the file is going to be the important words. Let's just read it. We are not going to be writing on it. And they're going to be loading as F. It's just going to be loaded here to the environment, but you're not really doing anything with it. So we need to convert this JSON file to a list. And they're going to use the JSON library. So we're going to call this list as important. Uh, words going to be equal to JSON dot load so the JSON library and then you're going to be loading the F so that's the file that you're loading so you can just check this by print the important words so those are the words that we have and uh, we can check how many words we actually have. Just take the length of this uh, list. So it's going to be len important words. So we have 193 words that were selected. So for our predictions, we're going to be using 193 columns, one for each word. The first part, if we get one of the reviews, for example, uh, let's say the products. Uh, the review, we get the first one. So that's what we have. We have a text like that, that has a bunch of punctuation, like the period, uh, we have the exclamation, we have these. So we have all those symbols that are, they are not important and they, and they don't exist in our important words. So the first thing that you have to do is to clean this. And for that, we are going to be using some functions from the string uh, class that uh, it's already uh, loaded on Python automatically. So I'm going to give you an example on how to do that. If you have a text that is equal, uh, hello, Sam, and an exclamation. Let's say we want to change the letter S to a P. That is a function named the translate that receives uh, a code, an ASC code to replace two characters. But we don't know what are the ASCII codes. They are not that simple. Fortunately, there is another function that actually create those ASC codes. So let's say we have this text that we just created, the hello send. And if you do the make, friends, and uh, we select to change S to P. So that's going to be the output. Those are the ASC uh, code. It's going to be a dictionary. So the 83, that's uh, the ASCII code for uppercase S, and the 80, that's the uppercase for P, and the dictionary meaning that you're going to be replacing the 83 by 8, 80. And to make it to work, we can just save this as a table or something like that. And then you can just do the text dot translate uh, and then the table. So when you do that, now we replace it as by P. Um, this make trans, uh, it's gonna create for you um, those ASCII codes based on the inputs that you include here. If you just include one input, just the first element of this function, so it needs to be a dictionary. If you include two, like I did, it's gonna replace the first one by the second one. 
And you can include a third one, actually. And the third one are going to be all the elements that are going to, all the characters that are going to be set as new. So I should say, for example, the third one and put the comma. So if you just print table, if you run now, we create a dictionary where the S is going to be replaced by P and the comma that has the ASCII code 44 is going to be replaced by none. And when we run this, now we have hello pen without the comma. Okay, that's good. So that makes uh, it easier for us to work. Uh, the problem is we have a different punctuations and I don't wanna type all of them. Fortunately, there is a library named the string on which we can get all our punctuations. So we can do just like that, import string and then the string. And then if you run these and we have the string, oops, string dot punctuation. So that's the output. <coughs> it's gonna, the output is gonna be a, a string class with all the punctuations inside here. And then we can just, uh, basically what we can do now with the text, if I wanna remove all the punctuations of the hello Sam, I can just do the same here, like I did, basically. But inside the third element, I'm gonna put the string of a punctuation. And then I'm just gonna do the text dot translate table. So now I removed all the punctuations and that's what you're gonna do with our reviews. Um, however, we have uh, more than 5,000 reviews. You cannot do this one by one. So you're gonna create a function and then you're gonna use the apply uh, method in the pandas because the apply is gonna run this function in all the elements that you choose. So let's do that. So, oops. So let's um, create this function. So we're gonna call remove the punctuation. So that's how, that's how you create a function in Python. You do the def and then the name of the function. And then what is the input? The input is gonna be a text that is gonna be a review. This text is gonna be a review. So we have to put the column and then don't forget that you need to have this indentation. It's important. So let's just make sure that uh, this is loaded. Oops, so it should be import here, string. Just make sure that it is imported. And what you wanna do, you wanna return a new text is the removed punctuation. So you can do the translate. Let's just do this in one line. So the string dot uh, make trans, and then we select the argument. So the first one is gonna be empty because you don't wanna replace any other um, string. The second is gonna be empty. And the third one is gonna be the string dot punctuation. So we define our function now. So um, we can now replace in our data set. So let's create a new column. So we're gonna call uh, review clean. And then it's gonna receive the products and the column review. where we're gonna apply the function that you just created, the remove punctuation. So we run this. So now it ran for all our reviews. And then if you just see now our products, now we have a new table, uh, sorry, a new column that are supposedly are the same as the review, but uh, without the punctuation. 
So let's just check one and see if it worked. So product uh, review clean, and then the first element. So now, yeah, now we don't have any punctuation in here. We can check another one, the five, for example. See, no punctuation. Um, I don't know, the 100 and so far. So we can find any punctuation in here. No punctuation. You can see like uh, we have some uh, uppercase here. Probably there was a, a period in here, but uh, not anymore. So it worked. And uh, it's very important for us to remove these punctuations as they might actually confuse when you are counting the words. Because when you are counting our words, we can have uh, something that um, could be something that belongs, for example, daughters, and then the, the apostrophe S. So we have to remove this so it can recognize as daughter. So those punctuations are, it could be the last word in a sentence. So you have daughter, daughter, period. So this counting is not gonna recognize the daughter, period, as daughter. So that's reasons that you have to remove uh, punctuation. So you're not gonna confuse, uh, confuse, make a uh, Python confusing. Okay, so now the next step, it's time for us to start to count the words. And that's very simple. Actually, pandas has a function for that. So I'm going to show you. And we have to do this for all the words. What you can do if you have a product. And I want to count. Um, so this is the review. Clean now. And I want to count the word baby, let's say. So it's going to be str uh, dot count and the name of the word that I want to count. So baby. If I just run that, so I created a, this, uh, this series in Python that contains the count of the word baby for each one of those reviews. But now we have to do this for other words that we have. We have 193 words. So the best way is to do a for loop. So for word, important words, you're gonna create a column for each one of those words. So product uh, and the word that's gonna be, remember, if you just print the important words, those are the words so it's going to run word by word element by element in this form so the first one is going to be babe so you're going to create a column named babe and then you're going to count it so it's going to be product um, review clean so it's going to be dot string dot count and then the word and when we run that, it might take a few, a uh, couple seconds to run because we have uh, 193 words. And then we can check if it's working. Okay, it's done. Now, if you run here, now you can see that uh, this first review have the word great ons and probably a few others that are not appear here. Uh, the second one had the review in the review that had the word one, the third one had the word baby once, and the one twice, and the one once, and so on. And we have now 193 new columns. So we had five before. In the beginning, we had four columns. We added a new one with the review, then we had five, and now we added 193. So you might have 198 columns. 
that's it. And they're gonna be working only with the review. Now, the only columns for us that is important for our analysis is the sentiment and all the columns related to the, to the words. Okay. And remember that uh, we are counting only those 193 words that were previously uh, selected. Um, so we can do a count for all the words, but most of them, they wouldn't be important. So if we do that, uh, it's important to use something called the TF-IDF or, or, or solutions like that. That is going to be if your word is too common. If your word is too common, like uh, I, eat, uh, was, or things like that, or even stop words, uh, it's going to have a very low weight in the TF-IDF, and then you can remove it. And if it's a word that's extremely rare, that could be a typo or a very, very unusual word, you can also remove because it's not going to help in your reclassification. So it's important for you um, to determine what is important words. You can use TF, ADF, or you can use other methods that you can find online. I specifically like to use the TF, ADF. That's what I use it to determine those words. I remove it. The least important ones and the I think the the least common ones and the most common ones. So that's why we got these 193 words. So now we're going to start to do our modeling. So the first part, uh, we need to split the data into test and train. And for that, you're going to use the scikit-learn to do this test and train. Uh, so we're just going to use uh, from sklearn um, dot uh, model selection. Oops, I forgot the dot here. Model selection, and then we're gonna import train and test split. So that's uh, something that's uh, very useful for every data scientist. You, it's it's widely used for you to separate a bunch or a small portion of your data set. So when you do the training, you do the training in the training set, what we call, and then we test in our validation set, in our validation set that was not used for the training. So it's a data that the model never saw before. And then you can evaluate our model. So let's separate this into train data and uh, validation data. I'm gonna use the train and test split. And they're gonna get to the product. So now we have all the words count and all those things. And then we will just get to the test size. So that's the size that goes for the validation. So it's gonna be randomly selecting, I'm selecting 0 0.2, randomly select 120, 10% uh, of the rows to be sent to the test. And they are the 80% is gonna be sent to the train. And I'm just gonna put here a random state because those are pseudo random numbers. We can have always the same random so everybody can get to the same results. So you're just gonna do that. Uh, so the random state, it's gonna be one. So everybody's gonna get the same one. Um, okay, so now we can just confirm the size of the data. So let's see the train underscore data dot shape. And we can print it. And print the validation data dot shape and just to compare products dot shape so you can see uh, all those three data frames have the same number of columns but uh, the rows 
they were splitted of the products into um, training and the validation. And the sum of those two numbers is gonna be equal to this one, okay? So now let's start to do our modeling. So let's build our logistic regression function for that. Uh, remembering that we have to calculate a few things. We have to calculate the probability of, uh, of our predictions to be correct or not. And then given the weights, so the weights that you're gonna be updating every iteration in the gradient descent. So every time that we change the weights, we have to recalculate those probabilities. So we have to create a function to do that. We also gonna create a function to calculate the log likelihood. So you can check at every iteration if the log likelihood is increasing because you are trying to maximize it. So we need it to be increasing. We need to calculate the gradient that the, log, the derivative of the log likelihood, that's just the sum of the product of the errors of the, the sum of the dot product of the features and the errors, and then the gradient descent. That's gonna be the logistic regression function. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build a function for each one of those three, those three first, the probability, the log likelihood, and the derivative, and then a final function that's gonna call all the other three inside and do the calculation, iteration by iteration, weight by weight. Okay, a first thing that you have to do is that as you're gonna be doing uh, numerical calculations, we can't, it's not recommended to do in pandas. So we are gonna convert our data frames to an NumPy array, to a simple matrix. And uh, the first function that you're gonna be create is gonna be called this get NumPy data where we're gonna receive our data frame that you created, that's gonna be our training or the validation data. What are the columns names of the features? So this is the column name that you're gonna be outputting a feature matrix. And what is the label? That means what is our target? In that case, it's gonna be the sentiment and it's gonna be outputting a label array. That only an array that contains our target. So we can start doing that. Uh, remember that uh, we are working with a line equation like this, and a line equation has the features plus the intercept. So, and we have to add the intercept in our data frame. So when we put uh, the data frame in here, we have to add the intercept. So I just create a new column here named the intercept. And make it make it equals one. So we just created a column of ones because that's what the intercept. Intercept is one multiplied by a weight. And then we're just gonna get now the features, the name of the features. We are just gonna concatenate with the intercept. So we create a list containing just one element that's the intercept. And then we sum with the features that it's a list containing the name of the other columns, the features, that would be all the important words. Now, instead of to be 193 words or features, we're gonna have 194 because you just have the intercept more. And then now we have to get the, convert the data frame to NumPy. And that's quite simple. That is just the dot values that can use in pandas to convert to NumPy. So you're gonna create the feature matrix. It's gonna be equal the data frame and only the columns for the features and get the values. So this converts to a NumPy and then you're gonna do the same for the label array. It's gonna be equal the DF and it's gonna receive the label that is our target. It's gonna be only the column sentiment and it's gonna be the values. So we created uh, this function. We can 
test it now and see if it works. Okay, uh, so let's do, let's call this future, future matrix. So that those are gonna be the outputs of those functions and the sentiment. The first one is gonna be a matrix. The second one is gonna be a, an array only, one dimension. And then you're gonna call our get numpy data. So the data frame that you're input is gonna be our training, train data. The feature column is gonna be our important words. And the label is gonna be just the sentiment. And then you can just check here. the feature matrix dot shape, see what we have. So now we just have this one that has the same number of rows as our training data and 194 columns, because those are the 193 important words plus the intercept. And apparently it's work fine. I actually tested before, so it, it is working fine. So let's go for the next step. So the first thing that you have to do, we are gonna start our modeling with random uh, coefficients or random weights here. And then we have to calculate what, what are our predictions with those random weights. And then we are gonna calculate the error to then start to the gradient descent. So the first thing that you have to create is how to calculate this probability. It's just doing by applying uh, this equation. So the, that's the one divided by one plus the exponential of minus the coefficients and the dot product of the coefficients and our feature matrix. So that's gonna be quite simple. We are just gonna need to input here uh, the coefficients and the feature matrix, that's the X in here. And then compute this. So our predictions be equal. One divided by one plus, and then you can use the numpy dot exponential. So that's the exponential part minus, and then we can use the numpy and the dot product of the coefficients and the feature matrix. So that's simple. We just converted our line equation and uh, our data to probabilities using that. So that's the beauty of using linear algebra to solve all those problems. So here we are, we just created. So the next step now uh, that we know the probabilities in here, uh, we have to calculate the derivative of the log likelihood that is our gradient. And that's also quite simple as well. It's gonna be just uh, the sum of uh, the dot product. So we can do the derivative. It's gonna be equal the sum. And uh, what you're gonna be inputting in here are the errors. So the errors is this part of the equation and the features, that is this part of the equation. So we're gonna be calculating the errors outside here. So it's gonna be also the numpy dot and simply it's gonna be the errors and the features. Let's just make it consistent. Let's always call uh, the plural features. And then we created this one. So that's the derivative of the log likelihood. Very simple to calculate. So the next step now, we are gonna calculate the log likelihood. We are just gonna calculate this to, for us to check if our, 
if our gradient descent, it's going to the right direction because uh, it actually is not needed for you to do uh, the training. It's just needed for you to check. So this is our cost function. We are just checking if our cost function is okay. So we need to start uh, uh, with a few parts. First, let's just build this operator one. Uh, if it's a positive review. So that's another beauty for doing uh, binary classification. We just need to do the classification for one of those classes. If that class uh, has a higher, a high probability to be that class, so it is that class, else it's gonna be the other class. So we are just gonna be calculating the probabilities and doing the, all this calculation for if, calculated the probability for a review to be positive. So then we are just going to use in this part. And then we have the dot product of the weights and the, the coefficients and the features matrix. And then we have this exponential. So basically, we just need three uh, elements here. We need to know for the training part, what is the true answer? Um, so we are gonna need to input the sentiment in here. What is the true answer, the true label? We need to input the feature matrix. That's gonna be our features and the coefficients. So let's first computing the operator one. Let me just call the operator. The operator, operator one. So I'm gonna call this is one, it's gonna be equal. Um, sentiment equals one. So remember, our sentiment is going to be one or minus one. What you're going to be doing here, we are just returning true or false. True if it's one, false if it's not one. And uh, true is equal one and false is equal zero. So basically just returning uh, a vector of ones or zero, like this operator, okay? So now let's do each part of the like uh, the log likelihood. So first let's do this dot product that you're gonna be using twice of the coefficients and our weights and our features. So we're just gonna call the dot product of uh, features and the coefficients, and that's gonna be equals numpy dot, and it's going to be the feature matrix. And the coefficient. That part is calculated. So now let's do the second part in here. This log part. So to do that, we're going to do the logarithmic of the exponential. It's going to be equals the numpy dot log and then one plus the numpy dot the exponential of this the dot fc because we're going to be using twice and it's using it here and that should be a minus don't forget the sign here so it's a minus uh, dot product of our features and our coefficients now, one thing that uh, I like to talk about that uh, those numbers can go uh, to zero. This one can tend to zero, meaning that you're gonna start to have infinite numbers. So to avoid infinity uh, results, we can just put a mask in here and replace uh, this, uh, the ln here to actually th this value because this means that this value is too small. And then we want the, this value to be small as well. So we are gonna just create a mask that uh, is gonna be equals the numpy dot uh, is if, so it's gonna return true or false if something in the ln x, uh, in this part, if you have some infinity. Uh, plus or minus infinity. 
And then we're just going to return one or zero for each one of those elements. So I can use this as a mask. And then we're just going to get the ln next and the mask is going to be equals minus uh, the dot uh, fc or dot product of the mask. So for the same elements where we have infinites, we are just going to be replacing those infinites by the negative value of this dot product. So this value here is going to be really close to, to zero this log in here. Yeah, so, okay, so now let's calculate the log likelihood. And I'll just call it LL, log likelihood. And then we're gonna be just typing this equation. It's gonna be the sum of the operator is one minus one. So I just type this part. And then this is gonna be multiplied by the dot FC. So now we just completed this first part here. And then this is gonna be subtracted by the ln exponential. That is this part in here that uh, we just calculated in here. Okay, so now we created this function. So now we can calculate the log likelihood without exploding for infinities. So this is quite important. And now the last part that you're gonna use all those functions that you created to do our um, logistic regression function. And uh, we're gonna use this gradient descent formula. So we're gonna be updating the weights. So, and they're gonna do that on several iterations. So we're gonna need to input here, what is the feature matrix? What is the true sentiment? So we can calculate the errors and then update the weights. Or we have to set up what are our initial coefficients and the step size, I'm not gonna to talk too much about step size for these gradient descent. You're just gonna set the default to be 0 0.00001. And the max number of iterations, I just put to be 301. I just selected this number. Uh, could be 333. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters. More iterations, we have more chances to go closer to the solution until it gets stable. Okay. So the first part that I already pre-programmed in here, um, just uh, make sure that the coefficients that uh, we are using, the initial coefficients, I'm converting to a NumPy array because sometimes uh, you can include as a list. So I'm just converting to a NumPy array. And then remember, we are going to have two loops, one for the iteration. So it's going to run this loop, this amount of times. And inside here, this loop, you're going to have another loop that uh, for the coefficients, where I'm going to be calculating this equation in here, compute this equation. So that's going to repeat uh, 194 times because you have 194 coefficients, 193 for the words and one for the intercept. So we're going to have this loop inside here. So after we update all the coefficients, we are going to run again on iteration, calculate the errors, calculate the log likelihood and the derivatives, and then update the weights. We're going to do that until the number of iterations is reached. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, we need to calculate the initial predictions. So given our initial coefficients, what is what are our initial predictions for the probabilities? So I just wanna call predictions, oops. I'm just gonna rebuild uh, a function for that, that's the predict probability. And uh, it receives uh, our coefficients. 
And just because of the NumPy, the way it works, it's gonna receive the feature matrix, but we have to get the transpose of it because of the way it's written. So it's gonna be the NumPy.transpose, the feature matrix. If you don't, if you wanted to avoid this transpose, when you did the dot product in here for the probability, I believe you just needed to invert the order here. Um, but here we are just building now the, we calculated the first prediction. So using the initial coefficients and every time that we update our coefficients, the probability is gonna be calculated for the next iteration. And now we're gonna compute the indicator for the sentiment. So is that a question is one, that operator is one. You're just gonna make sure that it's okay. So it's gonna be sentiment when it's equal, equal one. <coughs> and then we can use this indicator to calculate the error. You remember the error? is this, this operator is one minus the, the predicted probabilities. So our errors are gonna be the errors, is gonna be the indicator that uh, is just uh, that uh, operator one minus the predictions. Okay. Now we have the errors. Remember the errors is the input of the function for us to calculate the derivative. So we have the feature matrix and now we have the errors. So we can use those both inputs here to calculate the feature derivative. And that's what we are gonna do. And you're gonna do this in just one line by update all the coefficients. So I'm gonna use exactly this equation. So for all the coefficients, the coefficients J, so we're gonna have the coefficients J. So we're gonna be updating these coefficients that we have 194 coefficients. It's gonna receive the previous coefficients J plus the step size multiplied by the derivative, right? So it's gonna be our feature derivative. And that's gonna receive the errors and the feature matrix matrix, but only uh, the column uh, related to this weight. So only for the specific word or the uh, intercept. So it's gonna be all the rows and the column J. That's it. So basically that's uh, how we create our logistic regression function. I just included it here, a part that's gonna be checking uh, every 30 iterations if the log likelihood is increasing or not. So we created this function now. Now we can do, so the output are gonna be the coefficients. So after we do all the update of the coefficients, you're gonna take it out and then you can see, uh, we can use this to calculate the predictions in our validation data set. So let's start. So you wanna run, so you're gonna create the coefficients be equal the logistic regression. So we need the inputs to be the feature matrix, the sentiment that uh, we created, and then the initial coefficients. I'm just gonna use uh, zeros in here. So it's gonna be the numpy dot zeros. And you're gonna need with the same number of uh, the few feature matrix, the shape, uh, the second shape. So to make it smart, you do the feature matrix 
dot shape the number of columns. So it's going to be the index one. The number of rows will be the index zero. And then we can run. Let's see if we don't have any errors. So apparently there is an error. So there is an error in the derivative. So let's see what I did wrong in here. I might have copied something wrong. And then the derivative, am I including the, the right order? Okay, it looks to be fine in this part here. So here, the first thing, I just see that there should be a multiplication, I put a plus, and uh, it's saying that uh, NumPy object is not iterable. So, so let's do a little bit different. Let's just remove the sum from here. Let's see if that's a problem. Because when I did initially, I didn't do the sum. I calculated the sum outside. So I've seen that error. A lot. It's usually got to do with brackets, doesn't it? Am I forgetting a bracket in here? It, I, it's a it's a it's a really hard error to interpret but <clears throat> it's nice to have errors we learn a lot from yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I like i like even live sessions to have an error so that's a nice way to show how to to work with that how to debug it so what i did in my original code i did uh, the sum outside the future derivative. I don't know if that's gonna actually change anything. I don't believe it will. We can retry this and see. Now we still have a, a problem here in the in this part. So what is not iterable? So this is the feature matrix. I can just check what is the feature matrix, if it's okay. So yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, so let me just get one, for example. So yeah, that should be working. We just got uh, the first column, the, the second column. So let's just replace it here to 194. No, that's not a, a problem to see. Um, so we have the sum, so we have starting here. We have the start of this. So it's not iterable. So is this the same as this? Sometimes we can have typed differently. The derivative, feature matrix. Hmm. So Just checking what I did before. So let me just make sure and copy and paste from my notes and see if there is an error. I'm just gonna copy down here. Ah, I see. What's the problem? I didn't use the numpy sum, right? So that's the thing. You need to use in NumPy arrays, you need to use the NumPy sum. So that's the difference. So that's the problem. This so really makes you appreciate MATLAB. 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes yes. <laughs> so actually in the derivative, you can do here also the numpy dot sum. So let's go back to our previous solution. Like this, you just run. And then you can remove the numpy sum from here. And then I'm just gonna run again. So now the solution is correct. And in this live session, you saw a live debugging. <laughs> so now you can see that the log likelihood is actually uh, increasing. It's going closer to zero. It's a very large negative number. It's getting a smaller negative number. So after 333 iterations, so this is a log likelihood. This is not a, a score that we are used to. And um, now we have to do for our testing, uh, for our validation set, okay? So remember, we had to convert the train uh, set to a NumPy uh, data. We have to do the same for the test. So we're gonna do the same way. We're gonna create the future feature uh, matrix, but for the test and the sentiment test, we're gonna receive the get, the NumPy array, the NumPy data. It's gonna receive the validation data, uh, the important words, and the column sentiment. And I just wanna show to you first, what is the output of this function? Those are the coefficients. So we tell to put it this. Coefficients, those are the numbers. So those are the coefficients for each one of those words and the intercept. And if you get the length of the coefficients, this should be 194 and it's 194. Okay, so now we converted these to our uh, NumPy uh, data, and then you can calculate the predictions. Remember, just to calculate the predictions is to get our feature matrix and our coefficients, and then return the probabilities. And you have a function for that. So let's call predict, pred, it's gonna be equal uh, predict probability. So it's gonna be the feature matrix test and the coefficients. Now we have the probabilities for those predictions for each one of those uh, measurements. So even the shape of it or the lens should be the same as the test data. So these should be like that. So we have uh, 10,549 because this is the probability to be one for each one of our uh, reviews in our test data. And uh, those are the predictions, just remember. So those are the probabilities. So we have a probability, this one of 0 0.44 to be positive, uh, 0 0.63 to be positive and so on. Um, so what you're gonna set here, you're gonna say that all probability that's higher than 0 0.5 to be positive, and else if it's less or equal, 0 0.5 is gonna be negative. You're gonna set the boundary in the 0 0.5 to be negative. It's just a, a choice, you can choose yours. You can even get different numbers, it could be 0 0.7 in both, for example, if you wanna really be sure to be a positive review. Okay, um, so now um, what we can do is to convert this to zero to one and minus one. And let's do that by use of a uh, list comprehension. So I'm gonna call this the classify predictions. Uh, we are converting this probability to classes now, and it's gonna receive a NumPy array. That is gonna be the, and the NumPy array is gonna be 
receive the input, it's going to be a list comprehension. So you're going to create a list and convert it to NumPy array. So it's going to be one if uh, x is larger than 0 0.5, else it's going to be minus one for x in prep. So this is a list comprehension. So we did this for loop with a condition inside and uh, we are just converting each one of those numbers to minus one or one. So this one is gonna be minus one, it's gonna be minus one, this is gonna be one. And then to compare, let's just do a table and compare with the original values. So it's gonna be a pandas.data. Then I receive a data frame where it's going to receive a dictionary. So the first column is going to be the true sentiment. And it's going to receive the vector sentiment test, because we're just comparing for the test data set. And the second column is going to be uh, our prediction. And it's going to receive uh, the classify predictions. And if you print this table, that's what we have. So this is the true sentiment and this is the sentiment that you get, the five first rows, the last five rows. So you can see a red uh, misclassification here, something that should be negative was classified as positive and something that was supposed to be positive was classified as negative, but uh, that's okay, uh, we, we can't check one by one. So let's use the accuracy. So let's calculate the accuracy using the scikit-learn uh, accuracy score. So let's do from sklearn.metrics import uh, accuracy score. So let's just run this and uh, we can print it. Uh, Beautifully, uh, we can just do print uh, our predictions, uh, our predictions. And uh, it's gonna receive the accuracy score. So this is a function. If you press shift plus tab, so you can see what are all the inputs that you need. Uh, so you need to be first the true and then the predictions. So we can call from this table. Now that you create a table, we can call from, from this table. So it's gonna be the pred underscore table and the sentiment. That's gonna our true. And the second is gonna be the pred uh, table and it's gonna be our predictions. And that's the accuracy that you could get, uh, 0 0.79. So 79% of uh, our data was correctly classified, okay? So that's how you create your own function and do all this work to do a linear uh, logistic regression. But this is just for you to understand how it works. Scikit-learn has all of these programmed to you. So we can do very simply, using the scikit-learn. So, and let's compare our results with the scikit-learn. So I'm gonna show how to do that. So from uh, sklearn dot linear model. So it's from the scikit-learn library and the model, uh, linear model. I'm gonna import the logistic regression. You're just gonna get the simple one, not the cross-validation one. And uh, now we can create and train our model. So uh, what I like to do, I like usually to type like that. So we're gonna create a model. We have to create, and then you call the function logistic uh, regression, open and close parentheses. I like to press an enter here. And then here, so all our inputs <coughs> are gonna be in different lines just to be easier to visualize it. If you 
press shift to tab. It's not going to work here. You need to do this here. You can see all the inputs that you can use for the logistic regression. It has different solvers. That's something important to see. And the default is using the LBFGS. It's not using a gradient descent as we calculated. It's using something that calculates a Hessian matrix uh, using the LBFGS approach. You can also select the different ones. You have actually the Newton conjugate gradient. That's a more powerful way to do, but it's gonna take longer to train your model. The only parameter that I'm gonna set here is the random state, uh, because it's also start with random um, coefficients. So to for us always to have the same, and then I'm gonna array after I set the parameters, fit uh, the model and the input, remember, is gonna be, it could be a data frame. So it's easier to use because you can uh, directly use data frames. So it's gonna be our train data. You don't need to convert to NumPy. And it's gonna be the important words. You don't need to worry about the intercept. It's gonna include the intercept for you inside. So we just included the 193 uh, features that you are interested. And we have to input the label for the training data. So it's gonna be the train data and the column sentiment. And that's simple. We just do this. Now we are training uh, our model. If you want, I think we can include something called verbose. Now we can include like two. And if you run again, now it starts to show how it was for every iteration. So how it's changing our score and working and all the explanation that we could have, or you can have a more simple text. If you just put one, there's gonna be a simpler text in here, simpler information. And zero, means that nothing is gonna be printed when you are running. So we just trained our logistic regression model. Now we can calculate the predictions and those are quite simple. So predictions is gonna be equals the model that we just trained in here. Now we have the weight calculated weights in here. If you wanna see, you can just call the model and ask to print the coefficients. And those are the coefficients that's calculated for each one of those uh, words. So I'm just gonna make this small. And uh, now to do the predictions, just call the model and call the method predict. And then we're gonna predict in our validation data. So it's gonna be our validation. And uh, it's just going to receive the important words of the validation data. And the output are going to be the classes. So we can print predictions. So the output are going to be also the classes in here. So it's going to convert it to one or minus one for you automatically. If you want to see the probabilities, you have to do the predict underscore proba. And then the output are gonna be the probabilities like ours initially. And then you can select a different threshold. Automatically here, it's gonna use a threshold of 0 0.5. So we do that. And now we can check uh, the accuracy as well. So let's uh, just do the, uh, sorry, print. So uh, S, Oops. It's gonna be the same way. So it's gonna be the accuracy score. Uh, let me just save this also as a column in our table because we have our print table. So or I'm just gonna call sklearn 
predictions. It's going to receive the predictions. We predicted the pred and the pred table. So now we have a new column with the psychic learn predictions. So you can see that uh, we are pretty close to the psychic learn actually. The same misclassification here, the same misclassification in here. Uh, so now let's just calculate the, the score. And I'm just going to copy our first score here so we can compare. So let me just do this. And then this, I'm just going to call SK, oops, SK learn predictions. And here it's going to be the SK learn predictions. So that's it. So this was our predictions using a gradient descent method. And this was the psychic learn predictions using the LBFGS. Those are pretty close predictions, um, but you see how much work we had, and uh, and you could note that it took longer to train our model than the scikit learn because scikit learn they use more uh, efficient coding uh, steps. Uh, so if you're gonna do, you're gonna probably use the scikit learn. It's a better library than what we did today. But uh, now we have an idea how the logistic uh, regression works and what is everything behind this type of code. And the last thing I wanna show here uh, for everybody that's gonna get the code when it's available, uh, you're gonna get this bonus part. And how can you do the logistic regression with a L2 penalization or regularization? So this is to avoid uh, overfitting and that's going to smooth your prediction. So I have here all the equations. So we have to do the derivatives as well. And the gradient descent just change a little bit. That's going to be the derivative. That's the same as before. And that's to be tracked at two times the weights. So when you do the, with this uh, L2 normalization, it's just show to be a, a very quite simple way to calculate uh, also it with the regularization. So we have the code, the code is gonna be complete. Uh, you don't have to complete yourself and you're gonna be able to compare as well with the logistic regression of the scikit learn. So this is a bonus that I'm not gonna go through today. So that's it that I wanna show for you today, guys. And uh, just to finish, I would like to take to go for some final notes and the conclusions of what we did today. So today we talk about sentiment analysis, what it is, and how to convert numerical sentences. Uh, sorry, how to convert sentences to numerical variables. As well, we showed how to compute weights for the desired word, and then convert and then use a logistic regression to probabilities. Uh, to create this linear classifier and how to maximize uh, and how to get the best solution that you can by maximizing the log likelihood and using a gradient descent method. And we did for the live programming where we talked to very uh, small principles of natural language processing, basically the part of uh, that you can work with words and convert to a table. And then we also showed how to create our logistic regression algorithm. And then we apply to this uh, Amazon's baby product review. And we get uh, a courtesy very similar to the scikit learn. So that's it for today. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. Uh, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn so you can stay tuned and see all the new videos that uh, this video is going to be uploaded soon. And also, Follow, uh, go to our website, www.cruise.org, and then soon this code is also going to be available, the code and the data set. So now I open the room for questions. I see that we have uh, No, I believe you just answered the question that will upload all the data. I did put a note out there that our 
webmaster normally takes a day or so. So Wednesday would be the right day to check on the cruise website. Um, yeah. For and that you would also be loading up the uh, blank file in case someone wanted to follow through typing. Yeah. I guess my comment is be nice to see if we can think of a an approach that, or sorry, a data set that's more uh, geoscience related. I mean, I can think of something like facies discrimination or um, <clears throat> there's a whole series of things. There must be some uh, geoscience examples out there. Can you think of any, David? <laughs> yeah, we were already talking about trying to look at chip samples um, okay. and extracting, because um, they're normally in a uh, PDF file. Mm -hmm. And so, so with depths and then descriptions, and then looking at the keywords and and word positioning. Oh, so you're actually I got you. You're you're, you're going to use the same guy, kind of an analysis, but but for uh, for geoscience data. Yeah. So yeah. Sentiment sentiment analysis. It doesn't have to be sentiment analysis. I mean, it could be just um, five different faces and assign them numbers one through five. That's right. Uh, so we've already been starting to look at that, but uh, prepping the data sets takes a little long. Mm. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can ask in the Q&A, or if you, you really want to ask, I can unmute the person that want to ask. You just need, I think, to raise your hand, and then I can unmute you if you want. By the way, I... I I just called out all those people on on LinkedIn who liked your comment and I said <laughs> there's zero he seemed look at my comment I said there's absolutely zero correlation between the number of people who liked this um, this machine <laughs> learning lab and the people who actually attended <laughs> actually I've had several comments that people um, actually have been doing the recordings oh okay so very much so there's a there's a good there are some people. people that will go and look at the record or listen to the recording or see. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then they have the actual code in front of them. Yeah. So let's finish the session then. If you have any questions, they're going to stay here for a little longer. But uh, you can stop the recording. And um, that's it, guys. Thank you for coming today. Um, you're going to do the next session in two weeks. Uh, David already gave you the idea to do one specifically in TF IDF. So I actually have some projects that I did at TFIDF for um, actually in the oil sector, but I try to identify severe injuries hmm. using okay. Ripple. So probably idea. we could do that. We could use this data set. So thank you guys. Thank you, Brian, David, and Daniel for coming and helping me today. And see you all in two weeks. All right. Thanks. It was great. So, Daniel. Yep.